Hi guys, welcome back. So it's that time once again, prediction time, where we have a look at the results from the Pint Predictor League, see how that's going, make some predictions for round three, and from what we know so far, maybe even have a punt on maybe how this whole thing's going to play out in the Six Nations. Pure speculation, but that is fun. That's what we like to do. So let's have a look at the Pint Predictor League. Now, you can still join, guys. Obviously, you're going to be behind in the league, but you win pints of Guinness, so you might as well get involved. So use the code analysts on the Fanzu app, over 18s, all that good stuff. Rules on the side there. Let's see how we did. Now, I thought I'd done pretty well, and maybe I'd creep up the league. I got all three results correct, but not by enough. So on the Saturday, Ireland, France, I said Ireland by three. Obviously, they won by a lot more. The Scotland game, I thought Scotland would win by about five. Obviously, won by a lot more. I was a bit better with England. I said England by 12, but England won by a lot more. So I need to do better in those predictions. So let's have a look at the superstars in the league at the moment, in the Rugby Analyst League. We've got Jack Kavanagh leading the way, uh, Joe, Nathan, Alec, Jordan, Craig, Ben, Malcolm, Kyle and Richard. They are the top 10. So let's have a look at Jack's predictions. He's in the lead. How did he do it? Well, he got the Ireland result very close. He got the Scotland result fairly close and he got the England result spot on England by 17 you can see the future amazing stuff Jack well done you so let's have a look at the Six Nations table and Ireland and Scotland leading the way very close both got two bonus points with those two wins and the points difference well there's only three in it so neck and neck there they are leading the way England actually pipping ahead of France because they've got two bonus points and a plus points difference actually and France there with one bonus point actually a minus points difference they're on five then the two at the bottom at the moment Italy do pick up a bonus point but poor old Wales zero points and a minus 52 points difference that's painful after round two they're going to want to bounce back for sure so let's make a prediction on these round three games Italy versus Ireland first of all and Italy have had a massive contrast in performances with their first home game against France one of the best they've looked as a team the second game, a real difference there as a team they didn't get going. That stiff English defence and set piece made them look fairly toothless. A positive for Italy is it's at home. They've been stung by that game against England, so they'll be well up for it. They'll be absolutely firing. The downside is, of course, they're playing Ireland, the number one team in the world, and they look pretty imperious so far. Look very good versus France. Has to be one of their best home performances uh, definitely got some comments saying maybe they got the rub of the green with the ref and that happens but that's not Ireland's fault so for Ireland in this game it's all about maintaining those high standards keeping the focus keeping the intensity if they do that you can only think this is going to be a win for Ireland and maybe a good win with Scotland and England with two bonus points Ireland will want to target another bonus point win so my prediction is Ireland by about 14 points now on to Wales versus England and Wales versus England is always much anticipated by both sets of fans. But interestingly this year, these are the two teams that have been building from scratch with the new coaching setup, the new systems. England made some big strides forwards against Italy, I think. Some of their basics, the scrum, the line out, the maul, the defence look pretty strong. Wales, however, haven't got to grips with their systems at all. For example, their line out last time out was a bit of a mess against Scotland. Both teams' backlines, though, yet to fire. Let's see if any of those can get going. And they're a long way off from finding their best team. So, so in some ways, both sides in a similar boat trying to build their team, build their systems after only two games. On the face of it, Wales do seem to be in a bit of a mess, but the two weeks training and the incentive of beating England, the old enemy, is a big one. It could take them up a level for sure fascinating to see if Gatland makes some bold calls and maybe drops some more players or he goes back to his old guard that's going to be one to keep an eye on Steve Borthwick on the other hand has made a few finds in his team Ollie Chesham, Lewis Ludlam, Ollie Lawrence all seem to be filling some key areas of weakness for England and surely Henry Arundel he's going to be added to that back line for another piece of the puzzle the final thing to take into account is of course home advantage which could be a double-edged sword because it does put pressure on you. And because this is a new team, if you like, that hasn't got that confidence yet, maybe that pressure will actually work against Wales. So we'll see. It could either lift them or it could pile more pressure on. It depends how the opening of the games goes. Another thing to keep an eye on is Wales' biggest weakness so far has been their self-imposed errors. 
and the penalties they've given away. So let's see how that start goes for Wales. So my prediction, I've seen more signs of England starting to click, but surely Wales are going to be improved to some extent. They've had the extra time in camp and let's face it, it couldn't get much worse for them anyway, could it? But my prediction is England do win, maybe by about five points. So a fairly tight win. I think Wales will be better than what we've seen. Then on to France versus Scotland. Scotland with two wins. France, the second best team in the world, supposedly, according to the world rankings. And it looks like an open, thrilling encounter because Scotland are going to throw the ball around their pox office no matter who they face. And if France decide to join them with their ambitious offloading game, it could be an end-to-end absolute heart-stopper. You know, it's going to be exciting as a neutral. It's just going to be exciting. For the fans involved, it's going to be very, very nervy. Now, against Ireland, some of France's hefty forwards did look to struggle with the pace of the game. So the quick game from Scotland could be a good way to go. Against Ireland, Antoine Dupont was absolutely on fire, but he needs more players to step up in his team. And that team needs to gel a bit more, show some clever plays as well, not just the offloading, not just the grunt. Now this week, France are at home, which I think puts a bit of pressure on them if they lose again. I think that is a real dent in their World Cup preparations. Last week, I said the pressure was on Scotland and they came through against Wales. But I think we'll see France raise their game. And at home, I think they might take this with a close one. France by three points, I'm saying. Let me know if you think Scotland will take it. So to finish on, I get a bit carried away with myself. I say, well, if my predictions come true in round three, what's it looking like for the table? Well, maybe it's Ireland on 15 points. I'm estimating bonus points here. Scotland and England on 11, France on 10, then Italy and Wales on one. So I'm thinking Scotland have got a decent chance even if they lose in round three. In this scenario, of course, Ireland have the championship in their hands, having picked up four points so far. So if they keep doing that, obviously they win. England and France in this scenario are still in it too, but neither have Italy in their last two fixtures. And traditionally, Italy have been the weakest side. Italy and Wales with two losses. They're probably the favourites to fight it out for the wooden spoon at the moment. So very speculative. Let's see how it goes. But if all those predictions uh, go to hand, then Ireland would take it and Italy maybe would take the wooden spoon. So let me know what you think on your round three predictions. Let me know how well you did in the pint predictor. And do get involved if you haven't already. And how do you think it's going to end up just for fun? All those lovely comments below and I'll catch you next time.